Do you ever wonder how much all your property is worth in your house and what you could get back if you could sell it all before you retire? Today, we're gonna to go through the process that we followed as we sold everything on our way into retirement and show you what worked for us and what might work for you. In our last downsizing video, we talked about the process of downsizing to your second half of life, from giving away to family and friends to donating whatever you can donate. But this video, we're talking about recouping some of the money that we put into your household over all those decades. Today, it's all about sell, sell, sell. All right, so let's just tone things down a little, slow things down a little, and talk about the amazing tips and tricks that Doug has for selling everything. And he's gonna share with you some interesting ways to sell the items that you have in your home and make them more appealing on different platforms. So let's start. We've said previously that you should give yourself at least a year to downsize your household into something manageable for retirement. And that is a good timeline. It can be done quicker, but you have to work a little bit harder. Some people think that they don't have the time or they don't have the energy or they couldn't be bothered to sell everything that they have in their home as they downshift to their second half of life. But you really should look closely before you make that decision. You have a lot of money tied up into your belongings in your home. Things that you've accumulated over 20, 30 or more years, four decades or more of items that you've collected over the course of your adult life. If you put the time and effort into it, you could recoup 50, maybe even 60% of all the total cost of what you've put into your household goods. And that is a significant amount of money that you can use to invest, that you can put aside in your savings for your, or your nest egg for emergency funds. You can buy a car with it. It's not something that you should just regard because you don't feel like you have the time to do it or the energy to do it. It is really worth it and it's a smart move to recoup some of that. It's better than decades later it being all thrown out and you've never realized anything back from that. It's a really good feeling when you sell all this and you keep a ledger of all the items that you've sold and you watch it add up to the thousands of dollars that you've actually recouped some of the money that you've put into it. In our last video, we talked about having respect for your items, about loving people and using things, but respecting the items that you own. And that's exactly what Doug's talking about. You have to have respect for the money that went into those items. And now it's time to get that money back. So let's start with number one. And Doug just mentioned it was keep a log. So now that you're committed to this process and you're going to make some of that money back, you're going to recoup some of the money from all your things. The first thing you want to do is keep a log. I brought home a detective investigator's notebook. It's eight and a half by 11 and it's a hundred pages. And we kept a month by month journal of everything that we sold. Our goal was to sell $2,000 worth of property a month. Some months we blew right through that. Other months was a little bit slower, but when you have multiple listings and they're just coming in little by little, you can meet that goal. And that's why if you have a year to do this, you will see that over the course of that year, you will meet that goal every month. Now, when I say $2,000 a month, in reality, what we were doing, some months we made much more than that and some months we made less. But once we hit that $2,000 goal each month, anything we sold beyond that, we carried over to the next months. So sometimes we were three months ahead. We had already sold the $2,000 worth of property for this month, the next month, and the month after that. But rest assured, at some point, it will slow down as you're grinding through the little items. And that's where it gives you a bit of breathing time to just chip away and add to that month that's four months down the road. By the time you get to that month, you'll be well on your way and you can easily top it up to $2,000. We were actually able to carry that through in our goal of $2,000 every month. So make sure you stay tuned to the end of our video when we're gonna share exactly how much we made over the course of our selling. And you may find it shocking. We hope that you find it inspirational to try and claw back some of the money that you've invested into your household goods. And if you find our video interesting about selling your property, please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. We'd love to hear what your experiences were like selling your property as you work towards your second half of life in retirement. The next tip that Doug has is know what platform you're gonna use, whether that is a local platform, even a garage sale, or a regional platform, or even an international platform. All those platforms can work together to ensure that you are able to sell all your items and get the best price for those items. So as Monique mentioned, there are three main platforms that we use. 
local, which will be your local online platform. It's maybe an app that you can have people from your town or city or region that you live in come by. They're looking for stuff that's close by that they can just come pick up at your home. And there's many of those in the different communities that people live in. By regional, we mean something like Facebook Marketplace. We weren't big Facebook people just by our generation, I guess, and by the jobs that we had. Facebook Marketplace is the go-to for selling everything. You have so much more leeway there to advertise, to describe your items, to put pictures. Most people are on Facebook Marketplace. That is where you wanna be selling the bulk of your goods. If you're not on Facebook, or if you've never sold on Facebook Marketplace, first thing you have to do is sign up for an account. I think most people are on Facebook to some degree, but maybe not a marketplace. When you first sign up for marketplace, there is a waiting period before you can start to sell. They let you sell one item, then two, but first you have to prove that you're not a robot or not a robot or not a robot or some other scam. First thing, get on Facebook, sign up on Facebook marketplace. Once you've been on for a month and made a successful sale or two, then Facebook Marketplace opens up and they allow you to list multiple items. Then you can really get going. Then things start to steamroll ahead. But you need to get on Facebook Marketplace as soon as possible. And the last platform that we talked about is international. And for us, that was eBay. It allows you to sell some of the items that are more desired internationally than they are locally. Well, some of the items that we decided to sell internationally were Lalique, for example. And Doug did some research and it was best to sell those internationally. And I think most of those ended up going to yeah. China. There's a, there's a larger market for Lalique crystal in China. So we did ship off some of the Lalique to China and that was through eBay. Doug also sold some of my diamonds through eBay and that was just a better place to get the money back rather than just trying to sell locally. On eBay, there are online stores as well all over the world and while we couldn't sell the diamonds locally, we just weren't getting the price that we were comfortable with going back to our local jewelers with the diamonds as there's just quite a markup when they sell them compared to what they're worth when you try and return them. However, on eBay, there are online stores internationally that are looking for the opportunities to buy your used diamonds. And with our certificate of authenticity, we ship them out of country and we're paid a fair price for them and they were able to be resold elsewhere. Well, and there was other items too that we shipped elsewhere in the world via eBay. And it's the same process. You have to sign up for an account and prove that you're legit. But once you do, it's a worthwhile platform to be on for the things that you can't sell locally. And the last platform that you don't want to skip over is the classic yard sale or garage sale. So we did pick a weekend in the fall where everything that we thought would go at a garage sale, we assembled in our garage and we had two long days of selling. And that's an excellent way to get rid of many items in one weekend. And that's true. All those little things that are dollar, two dollars, it's amazing how fast they add up. And in those two days, I think we made about $1,600, which was very close to our $2,000 goal for the month itself. So a garage sale, a two day garage sale is well worth it for all those little things that nobody wants to buy online. We've talked about this before, but getting attached to items can often skew you when you're trying to sell them. You get emotionally attached and you feel that perhaps they're worth a lot more than they actually are. So the next tip is to do comparables. You might think that you have a one-off item that is very rare and worth a lot of money, or maybe you paid a lot of money for it and that's okay you've enjoyed it. It's very important to do your research before you list an item. And this is as we get into the nuts and bolts of actually selling and what worked for us. You have to look online, both via Google search, but also on eBay, on Facebook Marketplace, and see what items similar to yours, maybe the exact same or very close, are going for. You may be surprised that they're going for a heck of a lot less, or Maybe they're going for more. You might have an item that you thought you could only sell for 100 that it's going for 500 on Facebook. You don't wanna underprice it, but I think the main mistake people make is that they overprice an item that they think is worth so much more. And that may be because they're emotionally attached to it or because they're, they paid a lot for it so they want their money back from it. You have to take the emotion out of it. You have to see what comparables are going for and you have to price yours better. You're trying to sell it. So if most of them are going for $120, Price yours for a hundred, price yours for a hundred and five. You want people looking at yours and reaching out to you to buy your item. 
The next tip for selling items on Facebook or eBay or whatever platform you decide is to have the right wording. And wording takes a lot of time and you have to do your comparables and you have to do your research. Just like when we're making these videos, we try and be as accurate as possible. People will call you on something if you're wrong. And when you're selling something, you don't want to just throw the item up on the platform and kind of haphazard guess at what it is. You want to make sure you know exactly what you're selling because people will call you on it. And if you sell something that is not what you said it was, you'll get a bad reputation on the marketplace. You want to have many stars. You want to be a super seller. Look exactly at what you're selling. Know the model number, know the year, the qualities and attributes of what you're selling. One of the jobs that Doug gave me when we were selling is to do the research. So I would often take the item that we were selling and I would look it up on Amazon and look at the wording that they used to sell it, what, how they described it, and I would write that out. And then Doug would take that and he would write an amazing write-up using some of the wording that was originally in the Amazon write-up or whatever other store you can find it in online. And that's really important. <laughs> Be creative but be factual. You're trying to sell this item. You want somebody to really feel like they want that little corn cob butter knife that you're selling. <laughs> he and did sell a corn cob butter knife. <laughs> and it's the best item that was ever put up for sale. And if you word it nicely and you word it in a way where it makes people want it, you'll find people reaching out to buy something that you never thought would ever sell and probably they never thought that they were interested in. The next tip is to take amazing photos. Doug took amazing photos of every item, whether it was on Facebook Marketplace or eBay or another platform, and you need to take time to do that. Very, very important. I have seen many ads online, local, regional, and international, where the item that's being sold, first of all, it might be just one photo, it might be blurry, it might be in the garage with stains and cracks on the floor, it might be with somebody's clothes or something in the background. That's all so distracting. You wanna showcase that item. If it's that corn cob butter knife, you put it out on a white towel, so the white towel is the background, but there's no stains on that. On most of these platforms are allowed up to 10 photos. If you're selling that one item, you get as many photos as you can, clear, colorful from many angles with nothing distracting in the background. Pictures say a thousand words, so no matter what you write in the write-up, it's the allure of the pictures that is gonna sell that item. It makes me think of when you sold your guitar, the exactly. that was amazing. <laughs> Time of season, it was just before Christmas, so I appealed to people's dreams of stockings full of that dream guitar that they always wanted. I dressed it up around the fireplace and I took as many pictures as I could and it sold in an instant, but I made mine the most appealing that I could and I had calls from all over. The next tip that's really important is to always, always remain professional. Certainly for selling, you have to take the emotion out of it. You're gonna get people, they're gonna want delivery. Sometimes you can deliver, sometimes it's not a good idea to deliver. They're gonna make arrangements to come pick it up and they're not gonna show up or they're gonna be late or they're gonna change their mind and they're not gonna tell you. You have to take the emotion out of it. It's all part of the process. When you do that, when you take the emotion out of it, it makes it so much easier. Many times I helped load up the items on their vehicles, whether it's bed frames, mattresses. Right. Many times we delivered furniture items to people's homes. It's a sale. It's something that you can add into your ledger and work towards your goal of $2,000 a month. You have to be professional. The customer is always right. But I think what, exactly what Doug's saying is remaining friendly. So we always greeted our customers with a smile and helped them out as much as we could, whether they were friendly back or not. The next tip is practice your Portuguese patience when selling. That's right. Some of your items might be on whatever platform you're using for a long time, up to three, four months or longer. And that's okay. Some things it's not the right season for it. Some things you just made to relist and refresh because it's fallen too far down in the rankings. But eventually that item will sell. If it doesn't, it's in the garage sale or it's being donated. The main thing is to be patient and not give up hope. Also be realistic about what your item is worth. We talked about it a bit before about being too sentimental and attached to an item and holding out. Don't be stubborn. The market sets the price. If you've done your research, you'll know what similar items are selling for. So you, if you have your price marked probably a little bit better than that, <laughs> you will get the sale eventually if those items are selling. But be realistic and add it up. You can't take it with you. If you're moving abroad, it's just things. Love people, use things. 
And people always want to feel like they're getting a bit of a deal. And that's one thing I think that Doug did really well. You have to price it so that when they do ask for a little bit of a discount, that they get it, right? Sorry. <laughs> right. Most people make the offer online when they come to pick it up. The item has already been agreed upon for the price. However, you do get others that show up and you have to negotiate in person with them. And if you feel like you have a really good price, but they're asking for just for a little bit less, what's the difference? They've come all that way. They're acting in good faith. A sale's a sale. You have to also be aware of some of the people, many of the people that are coming, they need that item. So if you've given it for another five or $10 below your bottom line, but it's to somebody who really needed it, was really appreciative of getting it, and they can walk away feeling good about something that they got for a better price, and you can know that it's going to somewhere that's appreciated, it's okay to let it go. You'd be surprised at what you can sell. I had a couple bottles of cologne that I didn't really wear. There was maybe three quarters of them down to a half. If you buy a brand new bottle of cologne and it's $150, $160, I had a half bottle and I put it on Facebook for 50. I sold it for 40. That's $40 in my pocket for something that I probably would have just thrown away. So remember, even the items that you don't think that you can sell are probably sellable. Track Us Down wishes you all the best of luck as you begin the process of moving into your second half of life by selling items that you have in your home. We would love to hear down below how that's going for you and if you've sold anything as funny as a half bottle of cologne. And remember, be patient, keep a ledger, use all the platforms that you can and just be positive about it. At the end of the day, we sold hundreds of items. Between all the different platforms, the list went on and on and on. Over the course of that year and a bit, we sold everything. And as we mentioned before, you start with just one item, maybe a Yeti cooler, maybe some decor, and just let it roll on from there. Over the next year, you'll be surprised at how many items you sell and how much money you make back. At the end of our selling process, we sold over $23,000. We recouped and invested over $23,000 of money that we had invested into our household. Now I know that's only a fraction of what all those items cost over the years, but it's still a significant chunk of change and it's nice to get back. And that started with one item at a time. Some months, that was only nine items that we sold that made that $2,000. And you're selling $15, $20 at a time. It may take a little bit longer, but it sure adds up. Give it a try. And that goes back to the idea of respecting the money that you've put into the items. We did use the items, we enjoyed the items, we appreciated the items, but it was time to let them go and someone else can enjoy them. Thank you for watching our video. If you've enjoyed it, please hit the like button and leave us a comment down below and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it. And as always, check back in and... Track us down.